Hi, I'm in San Diego. My name is Lawrence Yu. I'm Chief of Optometric Interviews for OptometryStudents.com, third year student at Southern California College of Optometry. And today I'm going to be interviewing the AOA president, Dr. Hopping. We're going to be talking about the future of optometry and how it relates to you as optometry students. Well, I'm, I'm Ron Hopping. I'm uh, an optometrist. I practice in Houston, Texas, and it was my pleasure to serve as uh, president of the AOA this past year. My interest this year has been many things. Of course, number one, advocacy is what AOA does. And we advocate legislatively as well as uh, public relations and advocate the good name of optometry and what we do to the public. But we've had a great year, a great year, when it comes to what we've been able to do uh, in advocacy and legislation and such. Um, the fact that this year we were able to get defined uh, officially defined the pediatric vision benefit as a comprehensive eye exam. We've also been able to fight back some really strong, strong attacks on the profession, such as the AMA's attack on the Harkin Amendment. The Harkin Amendment is the first federal non-discrimination law, and that's huge because optometry has been and continues to be discriminated against. Uh, we still have state law issues, we've got to beat those, and it will take all of us together to be able to beat those in each state, but uh, some major accomplishments in that area. So let's just play a word association game where I'll oh. say a word, oh. <laughs> and you mention what your first thought is. We just want to see how the mind of an AOA president works here. So, so the first one, future of optometry. Great. Okay. Great. Next, optometry students. The future. AOA. Getting stronger needs to be stronger, but it is the mothership. Um, it's the mothership for uh, your future, my future, optometry's future. Vision insurance. Vision insurance is the best of times and the worst of times. Medical insurance. Medical insurance is a is a necessary part of what we do, an important part of what we do and a growing part of what we do. Scope of practice? Needs to reflect what we're trained to do, not what legislators think we can do. And legislation? Our lifeblood. What are the most exciting changes in optometry to you? You know, we've got a lot of exciting changes in optometry. Um, <clears throat> how well we came out of the uh, Affordable Care Act and how well we're positioned in that is an exciting change. And, and with this pediatric vision benefit, with the Harkin Amendment, those things exciting changes because, because, because optometry is now recognized as an integral part of the health care of the country. Very excited about that. The other thing I'm really excited about, um, highly excited about, is that I see optometry students getting it quicker, sooner than they have in the past. With the strong interest and, and increased interest uh, and participation by the students, what students are doing with AOA PAC and supporting that at, at, at great levels tells me the future is exceptionally bright. And because uh, that's what we're at where we are, a legislative profession. And when and when that legislation, when we don't pay attention to that legislation, we're done. And, um, and, and I'm very excited about how well students have embraced it. Do you have any advice for how students in optometry school can build up their leadership skills and hopefully lead optometry to an even brighter future? I think, I think we've got exceptionally talented folks that are, are optometry students. They've got They've got the nuts and bolts to be great leaders. And, and it's just a question of how we develop that leadership over time. So every optometry student I've ever met has the ability. It's a question whether or not they can make the effort and have the desire to go forth in improving leadership. What do you think optometry will be like five years from now after healthcare reform has been initiated? Nobody has a crystal ball. Nobody has a crystal ball. And, and so we keep our ear to the ground and we 
watch for hints and we look for trends and we look for who's supporting what to try to predict what that future is going to be. And as that future evolves or as that future unfolds, AOA is there to help prepare our members so that they can adapt and succeed. And the clue there, the, the, the good phrase is adapt and succeed. That world is going to be dependent on how well integrated optometry can become into the healthcare delivery system of this country. And that is going to require health information exchanges. It's going to require being linked up uh, electronically with record sharing and with information sharing. And how well optometry plays in that arena will determine how successful we're as president of the AOA, what is, what is your worst nightmare for optometry? What do you not want optometry to end up in the next five years? I think the biggest negative is if optometry quits being involved. We are a small profession in numbers. We're big in heart, but we're small in numbers. And if optometry doesn't stay involved through their membership and active participation, and and if we quit paying attention, we're dead in the water. So you mentioned participation is key for students who are fighting to find free time. What is your advice for the best way for students to stay involved with organized autonomy? I think, number one, you got to be a member. Okay. Uh, if I was a student, I'd be a member of however many states I felt I might go to when I got out of school. The second part of it is read the information that comes to you. Um, AOA News, your, your state association newsletters and things like that. So reading that information and just, you know, if you only pick up 10, 20 percent of it, you're ahead of the game. If you could be an optometry student again, get a time machine, go back, what would you do differently? So number one, never say never. Okay? Keep all your doors open and your options open and explore all those possibilities. I think we're moving to a more medical model. We, the, the, the other things, you know, the, the binocular vision and, and the low vision and, and the, the special contact lenses, very important. We own these. We can't let those go. But, you know, we need to make sure that we're, we're well trained in the pathology because that's how we're going to be. That's a main avenue for being integrated in the future. I, I think we don't continue to expand our scope, we're dead. You know, the world doesn't stay still. We have got to expand our scope. You know, medicine naturally has their, has all those other new advances open to them. We don't. We have to fight to get those. And if we don't fight to get those and expand that scope, again, we're just going to wither away. And that does you nor I or our patients any good at all. Do you have any uh, final words for our students? Great future. Go for it. Enjoy the heck out of it. Um, got a great career ahead of you. Quote from Robert Kennedy, and it says, um, paraphrasing, essentially is what we have today is a gift. It was given to us by those that have gone before us. What we have tomorrow will be our achievement. And unless we work to achieve that, we don't have it tomorrow. So we, we've got to earn what we get down the road and such. And that's going to take active effort. So, so. And, and what we can earn, what achievements we can create are unlimited. Unlimited. So.